If you saw my video last week, I wondered if we just witnessed a TPK or total player kill because so much happened. We left Fern and Orm dead, and I mean dead dead, and Laudna and Chetney were at death's door. Ashton had run away. FCG was in hiding, and Imogen just embraced Rudeus and turned into the Dark Phoenix. I was so curious about what would happen would Matt pull something out of his bag that would let the campaign continue? Yes, yes he did. He basically pushed the reset button. Who am I? I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. We are on episode 34 of Bell's Hells. Did I get the episode right this time? The party is in shambles. This could easily turn into a TPK, but then the villain, Odohan Thal, disappears. What happened? Let's back up a little bit. When Imogen released the Rudeus energy and destroyed a city block around her, everything went white. In that moment, Matt had prepared visions to everyone who was left alive, or mostly alive. And I thought this was pretty cool because we learned a little bit about those characters that we may not have known before. Fresh Cut Grass has a vision of when Dancer woke them up, but what's really interesting is they got some memories back of, what, a thousand years ago when they were first created. They see other automatons. They see this man who was kind of mean. Maybe he was their creator or programmer or whatever. Then they see a woman who was, like, nice to him and maybe he served her, and then she disappeared. And I'm wondering, is this the person FCG was created to assassinate that maybe <laughs> causes some of his uh, loopy programming? I don't know. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Chetney's vision is of his early life when he had lots of lady friends, shall we say. And also when he first became a werewolf by the light of Rudeus. Okay, so now I'm wondering what Chetney's connection is with Rudeus. Apparently, all roads lead to Rudeus. <laughs> Ashton has a vision of his parents and a glowing portal and a headdress it's all very interesting. Laudna's vision is when she died at the hands of Delilah, so we get a little Vox Machina crossover. Imogen has a vision of her mother and also of Odohan Thal. And of course, Imogen's mother is yelling at her, Oh, what are you doing, you foolish girl? Run, Imogen. Imogen, run. Run, Imogen. Just like she's done in her dreams before. And it seems like for Imogen, it's like part vision, part dream, part reality. But Odohan is standing there with her, saying she is a predator and to give in to her nature. Imogen's mother is yelling at her to run. When she can't run, she turns on Odahan and blasts her. With what? But that's basically the reset, which I guess isn't really a reset, but the threat hanging over everyone's head, Odahan Thal, vanishes and everything returns to normal. I don't know what I think about how this was handled. We ended on such a huge climax last week that Odohan Thal just suddenly disappearing felt abrupt. She was there, the biggest threat to the party, 
probably the biggest threat in terms of potential TPK that we'll have seen in critical role. And then she's gone. Threat averted. Let me know in the comments how you think this was handled. For me, it felt like a reset button. It felt like a deus ex machina turning point. It didn't feel like the party did anything to earn the reprieve. But on the other hand, I'm glad we did not get an actual TPK, but we did get some consequences. A party member had to die, and I thought this was torture to watch. I did not like it. First, Laudna rolls a one on her death roll and permanently dies, so we have three bodies, Orem, Fern, and Laudna. FCG can bring one person back from the dead, so he brings back Fern, because once Fern is alive, she can also bring one person back from the dead. Now it is up to Fern. Can you save them? I, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is... It's not fair for you to choose. Well, Fern, it's your turn. Oh. It's not fair for you to choose. I don't know what to do. We're running out of time. Okay, okay. Imogen, I don't know what to do. I don't want to, I don't want to put a choice on you. I don't know what to do. Should we do like a, like a, who votes for Aurum? No, oh. no, 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 no. That's Up, so it would be if we could no, vote no, no. three out of five. No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That was oh. no, we're not doing that. That's a terrible idea. Oh. I was just trying to. The only thing I know, and, and, and it's a horrible thing to think, is that a lot has come back before. <clears throat> but I don't want to. I don't want to say Orum if it means that Laudna's gone forever. If Orum were here, he would absolutely say save Laudna. He's too nice a guy. I reach into my pocket. <laughs> And pull out a small platinum coin. Oh my God, we're really doing it. Are you flipping a coin I have right a coin. now? Well, sure, but this one's made of platinum. You could use a wooden one. I have one from a god. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> I mean, listen, you can suffer with the grief of this decision, or you can just let it go. I was just given this coin by, by Imahara Joe. And it's, it's from a, fucking coin it's for their for, from a god. I don't know. Does that, does that make this, we well, could say a prayer. I could say a prayer. Who do you pray to? Well, this, the person, this, the, this what coin. What is that god? It's the change bringer. Well, they're certainly bringing change. Maybe, maybe we can pray to Laudna's god and she'll bring her back. And then... I can bring back Gorham, you right. know? Flip the coin. Oh, do you want to choose which one's Laudna, Imogen? I don't, I, I don't get to go, you, you don't. Okay, 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 this is me, this is on me, give me the coin. Okay. I'm gonna send a message to Delilah. This uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you send that fucking message first. Do I, have a, I have a third spell left. I want to send a message to Lila, but it's not my fucking turn in the initiative. Oh, yep. no. Nope. Oh, no, Marisha! I told you it's time. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Do I flip a coin or do you guys roll these? I'm not getting involved. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, We're thanks! <laughs> okay, give me right. the coin. I'm not getting involved. I'll, ha I'll hand over this coin, this but as part. I do. They have the easiest shit to do. It's do not, right I you're hate just, this. You're just flipping a coin. Yeah. What, are you, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna hand over the coin, and as I do, I will just sort of hold it for a second and. Uh, and just say, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know you, but please guide us in the in the right direction. And to the change bringer. Yeah, to the change bringer. Oh boy. Which okay. one is which? Okay. 
so... I'm gonna go this side for Orem. That looks like his shield. It does, right? That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. And then this one's gonna be for Lotna. I don't wanna do this. Then don't do it. We'll just decide. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can we at least just smush them together? Okay. I mean, for, I try and make for one big one. I, Lotna's been dead before. Maybe something could happen. Orm is just living and breathing like everybody else. If you okay, wanna okay, make okay. a decision, that might sway it, or flip the coin and let fate have it. In the time that transpired here, I'll say it's another round. Oh done God. 12 seconds, okay. and okay. you okay. can okay. take your okay. message. Okay, then I'm going okay. to send a I'm gonna send a message to Delilah. <laughs> to Delilah. Okay. I'm, I don't know if sure. she's sure. able yeah, yeah, to great. do that, but I'm going to try to send a message to Delilah. She's on a plane somewhere. You better bring her back. I know you want to be in this world, and she's your only way here. Get your ass down here and bring her back. Yep, got it. Poor thing. I would if I could. But I ask you to bring her back too, for both of us. Did you get it? Did you get? Did she say anything? Did she give you an answer? She's still fucking weak. That fucking bitch. Oh, oh God. You just stole my coin, didn't you? Okay. I'm gonna kneel down. I'm gonna go to Lodna. Sort of push her hair to the side. We'll find a way back for you, my promise. Sorry, I, this is, I don't know what to do. It, it's a coin's fault. You can, we can be mad at the change bringer later. <sighs> oh, I don't like how this is making me feel. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I'll go to Orem. <laughs> Just gonna gather him up. friend, um, can you please come back because I'm getting a little scared and we need, we need your help because we can't do this just by ourselves, okay? Do. I just roll. Roll a d20 and add your wisdom modifier. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a fucking plastic tissue. Oh, sorry, I forgot what I was doing. I mean, I didn't, but I forgot I had to roll. Okay. Um, my wisdom modifier, Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, 17. 17? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You expend the spell's energy, place your hand upon Orm's cold body. The tension has passed, and a calm peace comes over you. As this shadow 
this looming darkness of regret and anxiety gives way to the sounds of a soft breeze of Zephyr through the trees. You feel the presence you've missed for a bit as you turn from the shadow amongst the various cherry blossom branches and the wind that blows and this kind of soft dreamscape before you. You see Will. Nothing more than to stay here. And in that moment of relinquishing to whatever the next life may be, you hear Fern's words echo out from above. The soft dream begins to fade a moment, and you glance up into a shaft of light. And her words call out to you. And you're torn. You look back down to Will, who looks back at you. And as his voice echoes, you're not done. I really wish I could stay. I'll still be here. Oh, I miss you so bad. There will be a time. I look forward to it. Say hi to Derek for me. Say hi to Derek. reaches out and embraces you. Like a hot spring that just envelops you. You feel the warmth and light of a connection you've missed for so long. How? Go. And he throws you up towards the shaft of light. As you drift upward, you watch the tree begin to fade. You see his face begin to fade. And you feel the sting of dust and sand against your cheek. You blink and squint and come to focus. And as you look right up into the face of Fern, upside down above you, tears streaming down her face. Everything we can oh, so far. No, no, no! What are you doing? I'm. <sighs> what do we do, though? But what do we do? Because we. we was, <laughs> it was torture. I have to say that these guys are really good actors. There are some great moments through all of this. Really emotional moments. But it ends up with Fern tossing a coin. And Orem lived, therefore Laudna 
died. I thought maybe they would use those gray potions they stole from Paragon's call, because didn't one of them bring Ashton back to life? And that's how he got that crystal in his head? Or am I misremembering? Anyway, later we find out those potions are potions of possibility, so I guess not. So Laudna. As I've said from the beginning, Laudna is my favorite character. I've always loved that Morticia Adams type character and how Marisha has played her. I also thought the connection with Delilah Briarwood offered amazing layers to the character. Orem has always been my least favorite character insofar as he hasn't been as amusing or quirky as the other characters. Not that I don't like Orem, I just felt compared to the others, he had a little bit of a bland personality. So, killing off my favorite character in favor of my least favorite character was a bit of a kick in the crotch. So there we are. My favorite character of the campaign is permanently dead. But is anything ever permanent in D&D? And if you'll play D&D, you know about the raised dead fifth level spell. The party is of course searching for someone who can cast it. Maybe they should also be looking for a scroll with the raised dead on it. But here's another thing. Isn't Laudna undead? Can you raise dead on the undead? And if they come back, would they no longer be undead? So wouldn't Laudna then lose her undead powers? And of course, there's also reincarnate, where you come back in a different body. But again, Laudna would lose her powers if they're connected to her being undead. Of course, what about Delilah? Would Delilah even come back with her? But if Lana is already undead, what would an animate dead do to her? And that's just a third level spell, and couldn't FCG just cast it? Or Matt could just decide there has to be consequences in the game and Laudna can't come back. The second half of the episode is basically calling Lord Eshteros's airship to get them out of Basaurus and take them back to Drusar, where they'll presumably turn over Armand Treshi. Oh yeah, Treshi survived the portable hole, and that was the whole purpose of Bell's Hells for being in Basaurus. And now it seems like such a trivial part of the Basaurus adventure. They also contact Eshteros to warn him about Odohan Thal, and ask if he knows of someone that can raise dead. And I think Eshteros said he'd search for a way to bring Laudna back, so maybe there's hope for Laudna? We'll have to wait until next episode to find out, which is two weeks away. I have to say, I kind of feel sorry for Matt. Not only is he obviously DMing and wanting to create a really interesting campaign, but he's also creating a performance for us, the audience, which makes Critical Role uniquely different from a normal D&D session, and why I've always maintained it's a groundbreaking new medium of storytelling. Certainly he knows Laudna is a popular character, but he also wants there to be consequences. Creating a story for the audience has to play a part in how he runs these campaigns, no? Which is why last episode's almost TPK was so interesting, because bad luck and frankly bad tactics by the party put them where they were. And why maybe, maybe the party was saved by a deus ex machina moment. Where will the story go from here? Obviously we're going to get at least half an episode of the travel on the skyship back to Drusar, so maybe some random monster encounters, which may be a welcome relief from all the drama we've just gone through. <laughs> then it appears the party will focus on bringing Laudna back. So however that's going to end, we're 
hopefully going to focus on the Rudeus moon because there's a deadline, there's a ticking clock. The apogee solstice is approaching, so we got this deadline. As usual, I'll be watching, and until we meet again, may all the books you read and campaigns you play be blessed.